Okay, we're going to apply linear programming now to these game strategies. And um, we're going to do it for just a two by two matrix game. So that we're just going to do it uh, for the small two by two example so it doesn't get too complicated. Consider a non strictly determined uh, matrix game like we have here. Okay. And um, so we need we need to make sure all the values are positive to guarantee the value of the game is positive. So this following theorem sheds light on why why all the positive condition is not too restrictive. Uh, invariant optimal strategies. Optimal strategies of a matrix game do not change if a constant value k is added to each payoff. So in other words, we can add a value to each of these numbers and we can get a new game and that way we can avoid negative values. So for instance if we had this game 2, negative 3, negative 1, 0 you can see that if we added 4 negative 3 is the worst, the most negative so if we add 4 to negative 3 we would get a positive number and we can do that as long as we add 4 to each of these and and it turns out that uh, the solution to this new game will also be the same solution to the original game. So we're going to add 4 so that all these values will be positive. So 2 plus 4 is 6, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, negative 1 plus 4 is 3, and 0 plus 4 is 4. Okay, then we find P star, Q star, and V for this new game. And now V minus 4 will be the original solution. So see, at the end, we'll take 4 away from V to get back to the solution to the original game. Okay, we already know how to do this. So just pretend like we're doing this game and go to your formulas from the previous section. And I'll leave you to do that. But um, we take uh, D minus C uh, over capital D. I've got capital D calculated up here. It's 6. And then... Um, so for this game, A is 6, B is 1, C is 4, D is, C is 3, D is 4. And then you can calculate capital D, A plus D minus B plus C and get 6. So we would have 4 minus 3 over 6. And again, go back to the other formulas and see you know, how we calculate this using these values. And then 6 minus 1 is 5, so we have 5 over 6. So we have 1 over 6 and 5 over 6 for P star. For Q star, we would have 4 minus 1 over 6, which is one half and six minus three over six which is one half and then for V we would have AD minus BC over D which turns out to be 24 minus 3 over 6 which is 21 over 6 or 7 over 2 which is actually 3.5 now um, go to the original game we still would use the same strategies P star and Q star but the V value, we'd have to take 4 away to get back to the value of our original game, which would be negative 0.5. Now, let's try this using linear programming. Okay, so we got, we're given this matrix, this game matrix, and these are our strategies that we're going to use, and V is V. Now, the first step is if M is not all positive, we convert it to a positive matrix by adding a constant. And you saw me do that a minute ago. Step two, we set up two corresponding linear programming problems. One problem, we're going we're gonna to minimize Y equals X1 plus X2 subject to EX1 plus GX2 is greater than or equal to 1, FX1 plus HX2 is greater than or equal to 1, and X1 and X2 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, E, F, G, and H, of course, come from up here. Now, over here, we want to maximize Y equals Z1 plus Z2, subject to E, Z1 plus F, Z2 is less than or equal to 1, and G, Z1 plus H, Z2 is less than or equal to 1, and Z1 and Z2 are greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now, we know the values. If we take a problem... We'll solve that geometrically, and then we'll use the solutions from step three to find V1 for M1 and the optimal strategies 
and value V for the original gain. Now V1 is going to be 1 over Y, which is 1 over X1 plus X2. You can also get it by doing 1 over Z1 plus Z2. So it's going to be the same whether you use X1 plus X2 or Z1 plus Z2. But P star is going to be the matrix V1, X1, V2, X, V1, X2. And Q star is going to be the, mat the column matrix V1, Z1, V1, Z2. And then V is going to be V1 minus K. And then you can check at the end. We're not going to prove it. Okay, let me show you an example. Because I know this is this is kind of complicated and drawn out. Okay, so here's our matrix. Okay, so if we add four to each of these, so just just add four. I'm just going to put a big old four here to let you know I'm adding four to every one. So negative two plus four is two. Neg four plus four is eight. One plus four is five, and negative three plus four is one. Okay, so E is two, F is eight, G is five, H is one. Now, we do E, X1, well, we're, we're going to minimize Y equals X1 plus X2, and we do E, X1 plus G, X2 is greater than or equal 1, and then we do, and then we have uh, 8X1, that's F, and then HX2, that's 1, um, is greater than or equal to 1. And then we can solve this. Now, our other uh, problem, we want to maximize y equals z1 plus z2. And here we have e z1 plus f uh, z2 is less than or equal to 1. And then uh, let's see, g z1 plus h z2 is less than or equal to 1. And we solve that. Well, you know how to solve linear programming. So let's just say that this isn't this right here is an example of the this would be the x1 axis and the x2 axis so when I solved this it's going to be an unbounded region this dark region here is unbounded and so I can't find my mouse there it is so I'd have a corner point here a corner point here and a corner point here right there so my corner points are 0 1 and that, that actually is fraction values. That's 2 19ths and 3 19ths. And then this point is 1 half 0. If you plug uh, each of these values in, you want to minimize this. Well, the minimum value occurs at 2 19ths and 3 19ths. So that would be the where the optimal. So that's x1 and x2. Now on the other one, if you solve it by graphing, um, you would graph this equation and this equation. And this would be the Z2 axis and the Z1 axis. And when I graphed it, I got a bounded region, which had these three corner points. I mean, 0, 0 is a corner point, too, but I, that's not going to, we know that's not going to maximize the function. So this would be a 0, 1 eighth. This is actually 7 thirty-eighths and 3 thirty-eighths. I just couldn't get the graph to say that. And this is 1 fifth, 0. So using these three corner points, I found out that 7 38ths and 3 38ths were the values that maximize that function. So now I know x1 and x2. I know z1 and z2. And now we know v1 is 1 over x1 plus x2. Well, if you add x1 and x2 together, you get 5 19ths, which 1 divided by 5 19ths is 19 fifths. Well, so that's v1. And by the way, the same thing if you did it this way with Z1 and Z2, it still comes up to 19 fifths. Now, from the formula up here, to get P1, you take V1 times X1. Well, V1 is 19 fifths. X1 is 2 nineteenths. Multiply them together, and you get 2 fifths. Now, to get P2, multiply V1 times X2 together. So 19 fifths this time. X2 is 3 nineteenths, and you get 3 fifths. So P1 is 2 fifths and P2 is 3 fifths. To get to Q values, Q1 would be V1, Z1, and then Q2, which I should have wrote a 2 there, is V1, Z2. So I take 19 fifths times 7 thirty-eighths, and that's 7 tenths, and 19 fifths times 3 thirty-eighths is 3 tenths. So there's the Q values. And now the strategy would be P star is 2 fifths, 3 fifths, Q star is 7 tenths, 3 tenths, V, 
is V1 minus 4. Remember, we added 4, so we got to take it away. So 19 fifths minus 4 would be uh, 19 fifths minus 20 fifths, which is negative 1 fifth, and that's the value for the original game. Now, I'll leave you to show that P star times M times Q star is negative 1 fifth, but that's how you would check it. Okay. Um, here's another one that you can do. And I'll just show you this one. I'm not going to go through it in the detail that I did on the previous one. But here's a game. I added 5 to this one. 2 plus 5 is 7. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 3 plus 5 is 8. So E is 7. F is 1. G is 4. H is 8. So you still want to minimize Y equal X1 plus X2. Subject to these constraints. 7X1 plus 4X2 is greater than or equal to 1. 1x1 plus 8x2 is greater than or equal to 1, and x1 and x2 is greater than or equal to 0. And if you solve this, you're going to get three corner points, which are 1, 0, 0, 1 fourth, and then 1 thirteenth and 3 twenty-sixth. And then, uh, so x1 is 1 thirteenth, x2 is 3 twenty-sixth. 1 over x1 plus x2 would be 1 over 5 twenty-sixth, which is 26 fifths. And then multiply... Um, 26 fifths times x1, which is 1 thirteenth, you get 2 fifths. Multiply 26 fifths times x2, which is 3 26, you get 3 fifths. Then on the other one, you're maximizing this function subject to 7z1 plus z2 is less than or equal to 1, or z1 plus 8z2 is less than or equal to 1, and z1 and z2 greater than or equal to 0. If you solve that graphically, you'll get three corner points here, corner points at 0, 1, 8. 752 and 352 and 170. So the optimal solution occurs at 752 and 352. So Z1 is 7 over 52, Z2 is 3 over 52, and V1 would be 1 over 10 over 52, which is going to be the same as it was over here. And then um, you're going to get um, Q1, you're going to take V1 times Z1, so 26 fifths times 752 gives you 7 tenths. And then Q2 is V1 times Z2, which is 26 fifths times 352, which is 3 tenths. So now my, my strategy for player R is P star. Strategy for player C is Q star. V would be V1 minus 5, so 26 fifths minus 25 fifths would be 1 fifth. And that's the value of the original game. And you can, you know, you can show that's true by just multiplying P star times M times Q star to see that you get the uh, one-fifth. Now, if you tried to solve this matrix, I mean, if you tried to solve this problem, um, let's see what's going to happen. If you... If you go through and solve it, I'll just let you view this. So I'm going to run out of video soon, but you can just kind of view this. I went through the same steps as the previous two, but these were the optimal strategies. So basically it says P star always is going to do this 100%. Q star always going to do that at 100%. And V is negative 1. Well, the problem is there's no room for chance in this game. P star and Q star would always choose the same strategy. So this game is strictly determined. So remember, on a strictly determined game, you don't have to go to as much detail to solve it as you do as a non-strictly determined game. Uh, got one more section to cover, and then I'll be done with uh, this chapter and the topics in this uh, course.